Hey everybody, Brandon here. Welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be playing another speedrun, and today it's going to be the Dragon Sicilian. So this is going to be an interesting one. It's my first time playing the Dragon in a little while. Uh, we're going to play the D6 uh, version of the Dragon. We're not going for any hyper-accelerated uh, versions of it. And we're going to go into the main line if we're allowed to. So sometimes people play queen takes there, but our opponent did not. We're just going into a normal normal position. So the biggest things that dragon players should watch out for are the Yugoslav attack with some f3 bishop c4, and even some sort of uh, f3 bishop e3 and long castles immediately, allowing d5, but uh, still getting some nice play. So we could try knight c6, the uh, the classical Sicilian, but uh, we are not classical Sicilian players this time around. Maybe I will do a run on that. Leak all of my tournament prep. Yes, I play the, the classical Sicilian, uh, but I should probably not leak my prep anymore. In fact, I had someone in my last event that I just finished this weekend. Um, they did a ton of prep against me. It was kind of weird. So they, they prepared for me for what it seemed like quite a while but my prep still lasted longer than theirs uh, but I ended up losing anyways and uh, what eventually ended up like kind of coming to mind was I really need to be careful about leaking my prep online so I do the tournament game videos as you guys may know uh, if you don't then I, I recommend them uh, I go I try to go really in depth on those games um, because well they're they're for learning, right? So that's kind of their purpose. Um, but beyond that, I'm, I'm playing Rook B8 here to target the B pawn just to see what they do. I'm also interested in moves like Queen A5 um, to see if I can get anything from that. And here the idea is uh, because they played Bishop B3, all of a sudden I have Bishop to A6. So I can actually improve one of my pieces. Uh, which maybe they didn't want to allow. And I want to play queen c7, I think, next. Just cover the e5 break. Uh, anyways, so... Um, yeah, I, I've had some... tough... decisions to make. Whether or not to change some openings of mine, because I, I've had people kind of deeply prepare against me. Uh, for the tournament game videos... They're pretty far behind, and that's intentional. So, you know, any of the prep I use, I still have time to use it, and it's not just going to be invalidated the second I show anything, which I think is very, very silly to do. Um, but I also still run into some problems where I play everything online as well. So, um, yeah, that's an issue. Anyways, let's get back to the game and talk about what's going on. So they traded off the dark square bishops, which can be a good thing, but um, that's more so if they're going for some sort of kingside attack. And here it's kind of hard to tell how they're going to do that. So uh, I like the idea of c5, c4, but I don't want to push it. So I'm going to go bishop c4 instead and uh, try to see what they do with this tension. Again, uh, one thing that we looked at before... In a previous game, uh, many games in these runs, uh, it wasn't a Dragon game, but it was a London system uh, that I had recorded, and I think published, um, is that a lot of people break tension even if it's not really good for them, which is a very bad habit. Um, so here we actually have this funny move F6, which I quite like, because I want to go uh, G5, despite it looking a little strange. Maybe I should break the tension here, but I'm not going to. I'm going to play f6. The idea behind f6 is I'm actually going to get some sort of dark square blockade and try to prevent any attacks from going on here. It looks very silly, but uh, it's actually a very reasonable idea as well. So, um, Should I go h5 first? I like h5, and then I can go g5, h4. Yeah, I like this. G5 and H4. And I can just kind of get their rook stuck here. So 
So if g4, um, we can take it. I'm more interested in playing some sort of g5, h4. Yeah, so now we can attack b2 for a move. Very, very useful way to spend some time. Um, and again, yeah, so this g5, h4, I think is very annoying for them. So they can do whatever they want, really. Um, but the second I, I get my, my pawn to h4, it's hard to make breakthroughs in an effective way. If they go queen f3, I can also go knight e5 and consider taking with the pawn. Which actually probably is best, and I think I would do that. Okay, so they go there. Now I'm looking at this move. Uh, is there any reason to change my mind? I can't take, that's important. I could go e5 though. And if rook takes h5, I just ignore it. But I, I think that's a bit uh, silly. So I think h4 is still the right call. If they go f4, I can try queen b6 as well. So I'm trying to punish them for trying to open things up, essentially. Yeah, and I think this is the way to do it. So uh, f4, I can go queen to e3 and then queen to f2. So if they ever take, I can actually uh, trade queens first and then take back. Um, and also they might run into some problems with their pieces being a bit weak. So this f6 move is strange, but there's actually a lot of cases where f6 is reasonable in the dragons uh, alone. So uh, there's also knight e3 here. Actually, knight e3 might be just better. It's just, it, it, it looks really good. Because they have to take it, right? Yeah, they, they just have to take it. Because their queen is hanging. They can go queen e6, but... Um, if they let me take here, I don't think that's good. So they take there. And we will actually take with the pawn we're defending it and we attack the queen so that's a very useful way to spend some time and then i'll go rook f2 and i'm looking at things like queen f3 there's not really uh enough time for them to to break through and do anything too crazy if they go queen e6 we could always just go queen f3 queen f6 uh, but since we're up in exchange now they have problems to deal with so yeah i do like queen f6 as well it's pretty safe. Um, I don't really see a way for them to punish this. And uh, B2 is hanging as well. So if they try to go away somewhere, we just take B2, take C2. Uh, Queen F2 is always a threat after that with some mates. If they ever move the knight, there's always this idea of queen f2, queen f3, taking the rook. Yeah, and so they just resign. Uh, I'm not sure if I played this excellently or not. Probably not. But let's look at things, shall we? That's how we That's how we get better. We look at what we can do to to change the nature of the game. So, uh, yeah, they, they went for short castles instead, which isn't really as scary for dragon players. Um, mainly you're going to be worried of some sort of uh, bishop e3, f3, queen d2, and long castles. Because one of the things you're scared of is some sort of h4, h5 push. But here it's not really possible. So, um, yeah, queen d2, rook b8 uh, is always just a nice move to throw in. Uh, just getting the rook on the open file and making this bishop a little bit less comfortable to move. I mean, it, it doesn't necessarily have to go back immediately because if we take, then bishop b3 is playable. Um, there could also still be consequences to that, though, right? Because all of a sudden you're weakening this diagonal a little bit more. Uh, but okay, so uh, then we get bishop a6, and yeah, all of our pieces kind of find nice squares. Th this piece is going to generally be the worst one in these uh, short castle positions. Uh, we're after bishop b3. 
there's there's two things to consider. There's bishop e6 and bishop a6. I think bishop e6 is interesting, but definitely it's not as good in these uh, short castle positions. I've noticed it can be good in, in long castle ones because you get these dynamic chances by opening up um, opening up the f file, but uh, you don't really want to be doing that in the short castle ones. So something like bishop a6 is just better. So bishop a6, um, queen c7, and uh, yeah, we could also just take on h6 as well. I thought it was fine to just go knight d7 and let them take. So, um, yeah, one thing that they could try is some sort of f4, but they're not really primed to do that. They're rooks off the e file, or, or the, off the f file, uh, because of our bishop being well placed, and they can't really move back comfortably. So, uh, that's why I played this move knight e5. I was talking about some prep earlier, and that's why I didn't mention these things. But uh, rook ad1, uh, bishop c4, I thought was quite reasonable. Uh, and yeah, and then uh, I came up with this move f6. And as you can see, the engine does not hate it. And the reason why is because uh, we're going to trade off these light square bishops, and we're going to play moves like uh, g5, h5, and h4 if needed. And it's actually really hard to punish. Uh, the weakening of the light squares because the knight isn't really on a good track to deal with any of that uh, and as you can see here h5 is the top move they take we take um, and now they run into problems so it turns out queen d7 is quite good uh, I yeah I just went for g5 uh, which was a mistake because queen d7 is very very strong uh, but I think we got a good position still after h4 and, um, yeah, I would prefer black here, despite kind of a weird-looking structure. And uh, a lot of it hangs on the fact that it's just not good to play um, for some sort of f4. And if we're ever scared, we can play moves like e5. I would say rook b2 first and then e5, uh, so this knight can't really ever be uh, moved away. Uh, but you can see that getting this dark square complex blockade uh, is actually very, very beneficial. So definitely keep this in mind if you're a dragon player. It's, it's something worth a shot to to consider. So f4 and uh, and knight e3. Turns out they can play knight a4 here. Um, which is interesting. But I don't know how much I'm worried about this. So if they take on b6, we take here. They take with the e pawn, and then we just take on b2. Feels very comfortable. Uh, I would not be scared of this, really. Uh, we can always just defend this guy with, with rook f7 and king f8 if we need to. Or take uh, a2 and start pushing this pawn. We, it feels like we have an advantage. Um, but yeah, after they give up the exchange, this is definitely over. Mainly just because... Uh, it's just hard to find any active plan. Uh, we're threatening to take on f4 with the queen right now. Um, and yeah, there's just nothing they can do. And if they take on g5, we can take the f-pawn and actually just activate more pieces, which is awesome. So, yep, completely winning. Uh, but a good lesson. f6, not as bad as some may think. But it's generally based on if you trade the dark square bishop or not. And uh, if they've castled long or short. Uh, sometimes you can play f6 when they've castled long, uh, but that's mainly to prevent anything like bishop d4. So use with caution, but it's worth the consideration. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. All right, bye-bye.